Hi everyone, this is Gary at Furniture Medic and in this little video I'd like to show you how to apply unicorn spit using an inexpensive airbrush and compressor. Okay, so for this project and just so that you know it's this little project I've been working on which uh, I'll just be finishing the legs with the unicorn spit um, so I need to mask off the rest of the table so Badger 250 airbrush, these are uh, Fairly cheap, they're about somewhere between 13, 15 pounds online. You can also get them at Halfords, Hobbycraft, places like that. Quite a basic bit of kit. That's what it looks like out of the package. Um, not much adjustment on there, but for this kind of project, you don't really need it. You can get more expensive versions. So this is one by Pash. Uh, you've, you've got more adjustment on these and you can get a finer jet for more finer detailing, but these are more for kind of artists so I'll find for this kind of project, Badger Airbrush, nice and cheap. They'll last for ages if you keep them clean. You can see I've, I've kept that jar filled with water there. So just a word of advice, once you've used the airbrush, they're quite easy to clean out, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, and just keep it filled with water so it's ready for the next time you want to use it. You'll notice that there are, I've got little pins. Just keep the pins stuck in the, in the jet there. And there's also a breather aperture just down the side, which is a little bit difficult to see, but keep that pin in there when not in use. And periodically as you're using the gun, you might just need to keep the aperture clear. The gun, the airbrush will not work if the breather aperture is blocked. So as I said, the, the airbrush has got very little adjustment on it. There is actually an adjustment to the jet there, so you can screw the jet up and down. Um, it doesn't really do a great deal. Uh, this I tend to use this with the, with the jet fully screwed down clockwise or thereabouts. So good, go down clockwise till it's almost tight to the plastic lid. And you can see that jet um, is, is about as narrow as you're going to get it. So, like I said, for, for finer detail, you might need a more expensive airbrush but for, for this project this will be fine um, so I'm just going to raise the jet slightly so turn anti-clockwise so you're unscrewing it basically it will raise it and that just makes the jet this is just water in the jar this just makes the jet a little bit wider and I always keep something a bit of cardboard piece of piece of scrap wood just just to test that the airbrush is working before you start to waste your product and Pull your product in there and find out that your gun's blocked up if you keep the thing filled up with water it's instantly ready so literally all you need to do is unscrew the jar tip your water out put the product in that you're going to use in this case it's going to be the unicorn spit and then you can give it another test just to make sure it's fine a nice fine jet before you actually apply it to your project so here's the badger ba 1000 compressor these are around about 80 pounds online um, and this is what I tend to use as a rule now to power the airbrush I'm running at about 30 psi you don't really need to vary much from that for most projects but uh, I found that 30 psi is just about right for this type of airbrush now you don't have to use a compressor you can actually propel the airbrush using these uh, aerosol type propellant so you've got an attachment which fits to the airbrush just on this part and then that's an adapter which you can screw into the top of the canister now these are ideal for small projects I would recommend even on a small project but particularly on a larger project that you probably keep two tins because what happens with these after a couple of minutes of constant use, the, you can feel the tin starts to freeze at the bottom and then it loses its power temporarily. So what you need to do then is swap over to another tin and set this one aside just to give it a chance to warm up and uh, refresh itself. And the same will apply. So two minutes of use with this one and you might have to alternate a few times depending on the size of the project. In this video, I'll be using unicorn spit I'm probably going to limit to two colors for this project um, I'm looking for a fairly subtle finish I don't want to overdo this uh, just 
basically a light spray over just to give a bit of shimmer and a bit of colour to the legs on the little table that you saw earlier. So I find this is just about the right viscosity for the airbrush. What tends to happen, most products that we use um, in the airbrush tend to need a little bit of thinning down, whether that's a water-based product and you thin it with water or it's a spirit-based product and you, and you thin that with a solvent. Um, I tried thinning the unicorn spit with water just to let it flow through the airbrush a little bit easier, but it made the product too wet, so I was getting runs and it didn't quite have the right effect on the job. So I tried it neat, straight out of the bottle, and it was just about um, thin enough to, to work through the airbrush. You do need to, every so often, just clear the nozzle of the airbrush. So if you hear or feel it start to spit or clog, then it's just simple. And this is, this is how you clean the gun as well. So I'll just remove the pins again. Um, if it does start to spit and clog, all you need to do is press the trigger on top there and just run your thumb over the jet at the top several times and that will basically suck back, it will create a vacuum and suck back any uh, gunge that's collected in the tube or in the jet um, back out into the bottle. So there I've masked off everything on the table except for the main leg spindle. So what I'm intending to do is just have a feathering over of the darker colour, the, the violet. So I'm going to use the violet vulture. I love this colour. I love the metallics. I love the gold. The gold uh, golden gosling is just another colour that's sitting on top of the violet. Really sparkles and shines. So uh, I'm not going to overdo it. I'm going to try and create some false highlights. Uh, just be a bit artistic and experimental with it and see how it goes. So let's add the product to the airbrush. So you simply just unscrew the jar. It's safe to do that even though it's plugged into the compressor there. There's no air going through that until you press the trigger so you can undo the jar. Any water that's been stored in there to keep the jar fresh and the, the nozzle fresh. Just tip that away. I'm not too worried about a slight residue of water in the bottom there. I would normally say no more than half a jar maximum because the product will go off quite quickly and start to congeal which will make it difficult to, to flow through the, the air jet. Make sure you always do a, a test fire of the gun before you go live with it so to speak. Just give it a now that's a little bit heavy so i'm just going to drop the compressor down to about 20 psi see that's very very fine now that's just more controllable so i'm good to go in on that see if you can see the effect okay so a light covering I'm not looking for a full coverage just raise the PSI of the compressor just slightly there probably up to about 35 is the uh, product really was struggling to come out of the gun a little bit. That seems a little bit better. You lose a little bit of control. And it swings in roundabouts. So here we go with the golden gosling then. Um, I've turned the PSI down a little bit on the compressor because I don't want overkill. Just 
trying to get a bit of emphasis on those spindles there. Very pleased with that. Just gives a little bit of emphasis and shape. It really does catch the light. And the secret is not to overdo it. Less is more. <laughs> <laughs> 